Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Today is Friday. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm so glad. Now, these things I'm sharing with you, they are so, so important. Sometimes, you know, we go into practical things. And, and so when you pay attention on this broadcast, there's a lot you gain. And hey, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, what are you waiting for? Click the subscribe button. Now, what happens when you subscribe? You, because of you, more people that are connected to you will see the message and they will be able to watch it. And then beyond subscribing, why don't you share also deliberately share the message and let someone get blessed. Praise God. Are you ready? Can we call for that deliberate today? Are you ready? Join me right now. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You know, when God says, I'll send the rain, He sends the rain to soften everything that have been hard just like when physically when the rain comes you see farmers will prepare their land during the dry season they will harvest their crop then they will prepare the land but they won't plant yet until the rain comes so the year farmers always talk about the first rain after the first rain ah, then they go to their farm and then they are ready to start planting things because why? They, they want to be sure that the first rain just lets you know that, okay, rain is truly coming this year. Okay. So if the first rain doesn't come, it shows, it doesn't come early. It shows there's going to be delay. And that's how they read these things. So when God says he's sending the rain this month of March, you must understand something that I don't know how you see it. For example, if you are a married couple and you are trusting God for children beyond anything else, this is one month you should be very, very excited. Because when the Lord says, I'm sending the rain, whatever is, um, whatever have been a challenge that have hindered your conception, wherever it's coming from, the rain by the rain that the lord is speaking of that should happen naturally and easy yes that's one thing you should believe for lord we receive by this rain we receive our children in the name of the lord jesus christ that's what the rain is for to make things easy for you whatever has been difficult in your life whatever you have been struggling with Maybe it's bad habits, maybe it's whatever challenge you've been struggling with. This is the time to release your faith and know that it is done. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I, I feel so strongly in my heart, especially those trusting God for children. I feel so strongly in my heart. I should uh, pray with you right now. So if you're there, believe in God for children. I want us to believe that this month, yes, this month, you would, um, you would conceive, you will receive that conception you've been looking for. And I perceive in my spirit that uh, there are a few people who are watching right now and I can actually see, thank you, Holy Spirit. I can see someone, you've had three miscarriages three miscarriages you don't have any child right now you've had three miscarriages and i think one of it most times they last for a week but one of it you lost the baby at about three months old three months old yeah so now thank you holy spirit what you're going to take in this month you will carry till the end. I'm saying this by the Spirit of God. You're going to conceive this month. You are conceiving this 
month of March. And you're going to carry this baby full term and you're going to deliver the baby and the baby is going to grow and live long. That's what I hear the Spirit of God say to you, specifically this woman who's had three miscarriages and one of the miscarriages um, happened uh, after three months, at the third month or thereabout. You lost that baby. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But then I sense in my spirit, the Lord, the Lord is uh, bringing into my heart that I believe God for those who are believing God to conceive. Are you ready? Are you ready? Release your faith with me right now. Father, you said you're sending the rain this month. And right now, Lord, I believe with these ones who are standing in faith, Concerning conception, concerning children. Lord, I stand in agreement with them. And I said, this month of March, by the spirit of your reign, they conceive in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. They conceive right now. They conceive right now. Thank you, Jesus they conceive i thank you holy spirit now 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 i see a lady oh the, the presence of god is overshadowing you right now you feel that presence of god you feel it you're even shaking in your body <laughs> i declare it is done in the name of the lord jesus christ thank you thank you lord jesus i hear a name matthew you're watching me, Matthew. Your wife is conceiving. Yes, your wife is conceiving in the name of the Lord Jesus. Receive that miracle right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Receive, receive your miracle right now. Receive that miracle of conception right now you are conceiving i'm not saying this year i said this month and thank you lord i stand in faith that this pregnancy will last full term and they will all deliver safely and 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 you're watching over these children because they came from you lord thank you lord jesus Oh, I give you praise, Lord. I give you praise. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. It's done. It's done and it's done. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So also, if you're believing God, whatever you're believing God for this month. Now, I don't know. You know, when God says, I'm sending the rain. If things have been difficult for you, you're chasing a job, you're chasing a business, you're chasing a contract, and, and they, are, they are tossing you to and fro, you don't even know what to do next. Hear me. Hear me. The rain is falling on you this month. And by that rain, this matter is settled. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you're signing that contract this month. You are signing it, and it's not just about you signing it. God is taking it through the process until everything is paid in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're, you're, you're searching or you've been chasing a particular payment for so long and, and nobody seems to be answering you. Receive your miracle this month. They will call you and tell you your check is ready they will call you they will call you this month you are receiving a call in the name of the lord jesus Christ. whatever you're believing god for thank you lord jesus oh glory to god there's so much anointing at work here right now thank you lord jesus whatever you're believing god for hey today is friday believe God today. See, within this month, there are things that are going to happen. I see someone 
There's something you've been chasing for four years. You've been four, number four. You've been chasing this particular thing for four years now, not four months, four years now. I hear the Lord say you're receiving it this month. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, just give God praise, give God praise, give God praise. It's coming to you this month. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I just I just see miracles taking place. Because I'm seeing rain fall on you. And it's a good rain. Praise <laughs> God. It's a good rain. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Wow. I remember I was talking to you about something yesterday. Now we're talking about preparing for the rain. You know, how, how do you prepare? So I was telling you yesterday about how, how the Spirit of God, how God works with your true self. And, and your true self is your mind, your soul. That's actually your soul. Now, you must pay attention to the development of your soul. And I was telling you yesterday that the things that happen in your subconscious, for example, when you're dreaming and you have to give a response to an issue, it shows the true reflection of your soul. Uh, so I was telling you times when, um, when Jesus shows up and you, 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 I should have brought this matter up. How come I forgot? You, you, you didn't forget. The truth is, it, that thing, though it exists in your mouth, though it, ex it exists in, in, in the physical space where you find yourself, but truly speaking, that thing is not in your soul. It's not in your soul. You see that now? So when, when, when truth shows up, it doesn't show up because it's not part of the truth. Now, when you see things like that happen, what do you do? You don't know, okay, look, it's, it's so easy to deal with this thing. I'll deal with it. So it's in your realm to deal with. How do you deal with it? Use the word of God. It shows you have more power over that thing than you think you do. You have power over that thing than you think you do. There are, there are people who, for example, you struggle with sin. Okay, and they've had encounters with Jesus. And Jesus doesn't talk about the sin. So I say, how can that be? I'm telling you practical experience. I'm not telling you what you think. And Jesus showed up and talking to them about things they have to do. And he doesn't talk about. Now, now people who are unlearned come out from that and I say, Jesus didn't talk about it. Uh -huh. maybe maybe it's not a problem it's a problem it's a problem how is it a problem it can send you to hell ah, but, but, but Jesus should have, would have spoken about it because hear me because it's not the truth about your life so when you see that kind of thing happen what do you do? You think it's a problem. Now you've realized it's not a problem. So what should I do? Walk out of it. As simple as that. That's the day you just know that, you know what? I think I'm just the one petting this thing. It's not a problem. So I'm walking out because your mind, you know that you shouldn't be living in such life. You know. You know it. <laughs> Nobody have to tell you that. But in your mind, you think it's a big problem. Now, by this encounter, you realize that if Jesus didn't talk about it, so it's not a problem. Now, it's not, no, no, he say it's not a problem, so I can go ahead and be doing it. No, sir. Walk away from it. It's as simple as that. See, the, I will because the truth is this. Now, you, you, you can't fellowship with Jesus and be so comfortable your conscience even talks to you about that but what i'm pointing out here is that everything every situation like that that you see he didn't talk about it now i know there are people who tell you ah are you sure it's jesus you you that i know are you sure it's jesus that appeared maybe it's a demon that appeared to you. no no it's jesus because the spirit of holiness 
Now, you know when that happens, the spirit of holiness comes upon you. So you know, because you're the one that will remember, like, he, he didn't talk about it. It's for you to realize it and walk away. You see, because if you don't walk away, one day that thing will come up and become a big hindrance to you. Just like Moses. Moses had anger issues. He did. It manifested several times in his dealing with the children of Israel. And this Moses, God said, Moses, I speak with him mouth to mouth. So Moses was one man that had wonderful encounters with the Lord. But there was not a time we were told that God spoke to him about that anger issue. Never. But guess what? One day that anger manifested and God said, Moses, it's enough. This is where your journey ends. You're not going to enter the promised land because of this thing you have done. You got so angry and then you did not magnify me. See, that's where these things become a challenge. One day, you're going to cross the line. So God is not going to deal with you oh, because of what you have been doing. No, you see that day you cross the line, that day is when you realize that you should have dealt with this thing long ago. And that's what I'm saying to you today. Deal with it. Now, it can be sickness. It can be wrong habits. Deal with it. But I've been praying about the sickness. Praying about the sickness doesn't mean you're dealing with it. Face it headlong. Hey, you know what? What does God's word say concerning this? Yeah. Because you can't, Father, oh God, heal me. Oh God, heal me. Oh God, heal me. And, and you're not feeling any better. Oh God, heal me. Oh God, yeah, you're thinking God will show up, come and lay hands on you and heal you after Jesus appears to you. No. No. I'm the one that needs to adjust. I need to adjust. How do I adjust? I take God's word. I look at it clearly. Find myself in the word. And said, what, what I see in the word, I don't see this sickness. What I see in the word, I don't see this habit. So what? I choose to become what I see in the word. And when your mind is made up for that, then the Holy Spirit begins to help you. He begins to feed your heart with wisdom. He begins to feed your heart with wisdom. Soon, out of your subconscious mind, you will begin to declare things that are real. I mean, they just wake you up from sleep. You wake up and say, I don't have this issue. It's gone. Uh, why are you saying that? Praise <laughs> God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, you know, now that's how you develop your soul. See, you develop your soul. Okay. So, Solomon had this experience with Jesus, with God, of course. And then God says, ask whatever you will. He says, give me an understanding heart. Now, in his subconscious mind, he knew the only thing he can ask from God is an understanding hearts. Why? Because his father had taught him it's God that gives that. And in that same dream, God said, wow, you mean you didn't ask for the head of your enemy? You didn't ask for silver or gold? So that was God saying, even in his subconscious mind, he could have asked for those things. But because that was not what was on his mind, his father now that was the influence of his father see never joke with the influence that you have over your children never joke with it be deliberate about it pump it in prepare them for when they will meet the lord because they will surely i know my children will meet the lord now when i mean meet the lord not saying when they die i'm talking about in their journey with life god will visit them if God visits them, what will be their responses? That's your job to do. Prepare them. 
When you see God, Father, give me car. Give me. Huh? That's what you painted to them as the important things. Paint to them what the real truth is. And the day they will meet God. The first day Jacob met God, what did he ask from God? He said, if you will be my God indeed, then I make a vow that everything you give me, I will tithe from you. Where do you think he got that from? His grandpa, Abraham. Abraham taught him the importance of tithing. So much so that when he woke up from that dream, he made a vow to tithe. My time is up. Praise God. I believe God Everything we've prayed about today is coming. We are receiving this testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Have the best weekend ever. God bless you.